Uh, what was the choice again? Wait, these choices have been rearranged. Uh, what was the skip button? Uh, will you skip through everything? Well, we can't skip for everything, but we can skip what we just went through. The sound of thunder, rain, and jazz. Well, the jazz didn't get to play because the scene went too fast. Next morning, like every morning, I mean, second Monday morning until. Wait, wait, what? Next morning, like every second Monday morning until he says, otherwise, I have an appointment with the nurse. Okay, that was a bit confusing at first now. So I'm gonna skip part of my first class in the morning and I don't feel any shame in skipping the rest hour. Rather than being thankful I get to miss world history, I instead feel dread when I think about these appointments. Wait, what's this scene called then? Six meters close to the heaven. I wake up at the normal time anyways and wash myself in the bathroom. I fail with Genji, starting my sleep disheveled hair. I quickly get dressed and put my laundry in the basket. I pack for the school day. I have all my homework done like usual, so I have a bit of free time now. There's no point in going to the morning class for 20 minutes before I'd have to get to the nurse's office. So I lie down on my bed and read a book until it's time to go. The door to the nurse's office is open, which is unusual. I enter while knocking to announce my arrival. Looking up from his computer screen, he motions me to take a seat with a friendly hello. Steam wafts up from a piping hot cup of coffee on his desk. It's probably not his first today. How are you feeling on this wonderful morning, Asao? I'm alright. I can't remember how I voice act you, but I think uh, it was cold yesterday because of the rain, so I woke up feeling a bit groggy. You too, huh? Quite a few kids caught. Got, got caught without an umbrella. So we've been spending time handling, handing out masks and curing sniffles. Hmm. Alright, today it's test day. Give me your arm. I extend my left arm towards him, keep my face expressionless. The nurse ties a rubber tourniquet, well, whatever, around my bicep with a breath. That this movement and briskly goes about his business. I don't think anybody really likes getting stuck with needles, but at least I got over my estate for him. I have to now, I barely even twitch at the moment of truth. Once that's done, a blood pressure check follows, and there are checklists and questionnaires to go through. The nurse nods and scribbles in my answers to the questions as I give them. Alright, let's have a listen now. I unbutt my shirt and put it neatly on the back of the chair I was using while he puts on his telepathy. I know my heart the order my I know by heart the order of places where he's going to listen to my lungs and heartbeats. I adjust my breathing to be even and deep without even being asked. It's become routine now for both of us. It's funny that pretty much the only time in one's life when you really concentrate on breathing and nothing else it has always amused me. The nurse lifts the cold steel of telescope from my chest and places a few inches lower, listening again. The content of the contact of the metal makes me flinch on reflex, even though I was expecting it. He furrows his brow, but I can't tell if it's because he's unhappy or if he's trying to pick something specific out among the complex multitude of irregularities in my heartbeat. Is there something wrong? Please don't talk. I shut up and become more anxious. The nurse is nice, but I can't help disliking these mandatory checkups. I wonder if I'm going to end up hating all medical appointments from now on because of this. He finally lifts the circular metal plate from my chest to allow me to talk again. Everything seems to be fine. Are you feeling alright yourself? I suppose that was that yesterday when it was raining and yeah, I really felt a bit under the weather in the morning. Maybe I caught a cold. Where are you with Emmy? She came down with a cold too. My people told her to stay in bed for a day or two. Really? I mean, I was with her, but I didn't know she got sick. I guess it was a dumb thing after all for her to go out in the rain like that. Yeah, well, let's put that aside. Everything seems to check out for you, but remember to be careful. And of course, I really don't want to go back to the hospital. He catches something, maybe a repressed terror, I don't know, in my voice, and glances up from some papers he was looking at. Hey, don't worry, at this stage it would take a huge crash in your condition to get you re -optimized. It doesn't really reassure me, but grumbling about it to him won't make any difference, I quietly take my leave. 
walking along the corridor from uh, the auxiliary building to the main school building, I encounter a young female nurse coming the other way. She smiles at me when we pass by each other. I thought it was going to be like, oh, sudden new character? But no. I don't know. Maybe there is a character, like another nurse or something. I don't know. I've never seen it, though. The lobby is empty of people, no surprise, and classes are still going on. I hear a muffled sound of discussion coming from behind the first floor classroom doors. No, we're still in the same scene. I glance at my watch, I'd have to rush to get to my classroom in time, and I don't feel like going to class anyway, so I decide to climb up to the roof and have an extra long lunch break. Amy promised she'd bring something for me today, but if she's sick, that's probably not going to happen. I'm not feeling hungry anyway, so it's all the same. I climb up the steep stairway to dwell to the roof is oddly liberating, almost like losing weight. I feel satisfied that it doesn't wind me as badly win me as badly as the first time I came up here. Push up the squeaky door at the top and step into sunlight. You know, this is just, this recording's dragging on forever, man. <laughs> The chain linked fence allows for a grand view over the treetops, all the way to the grey silhouettes of downtown further away. The dreary weather of yesterday is just a memory now, the silvery blue sky seems to be a mere arm's reach away. I forget the woman that I'm in a bad mood, the wolf of the sun soaks into my bones, making me drowsy and lazy instead. The bell ring for lunch break start ah, startling me back into reality. Soon afterwards, the quad below me bursts into life. Students pour out of the doors down on the ground floor, intent on enjoying lunch at the quad and the lush gardens in this perfect weather. When I hear the door to the stairwell being pushed open, I don't bother turn to see who it is. The intruder starts coming towards me with uneven footsteps. The little river stones, the roof is covered with rattle and crunch underfoot. Footsteps stop a few feet behind me, followed by silence. I look upwards into the glowing eye of the sun, absorbing its warmth with my whole body. What are you doing? I turn around out of courtesy at her first words to behold the slim, awkward figure of Rin Tezuka. She looks very much like herself today, too. Her hair is maybe a tad messier than usual, as if she just got out of bed. She stands with her weight shifted onto one foot, looking at me with mild curiosity, as if I were something in a Star Wars display window. Hello, you're spacing out, I guess. What about you? Emmy promised food we usually eat here. I'm afraid you're gonna be disappointed. I hear that Emmy came down with a cold. Oh, I guess that makes sense. She wasn't in class. Wait. Wouldn't she know? Because Emmy helps her get dressed, doesn't she? It's not that common to get a cold in June, though. You don't think she went running at the track afterwards like you said. The rain just kept going. Probably. In the rain? In the rain. That sounds like a bit too much for just keeping up with training, Regime. Anyway, Emmy is a hard-headed one, though, so I can see her running in the downpour just because she had to. Well, that's obviously overdoing it. Probably why she came down with that cold, too. But I guess it's kind of cool. Speaking of that, I'm not feeling well, I'll right. <laughs> Rin sneezed pretty hard for... Uh, so what kind of sneeze? Is it the typical... <laughs> I don't know. I, as I've said many times, my sneeze is pathetic. Like, you got people that have that kind of. <laughs> I just have, like, a kind of. Chee, chee. Rin sneezes pretty hard, failing to stop it in time. She cranes her head down to wipe her nose on her shoulder, so deciding that would be too unladylike, I pull out my handkerchief and hold it to her nose. Here, bless you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. She clears her nose, and I dab the handkerchief gently on it to wipe it clean. The nose is really cute, oddly enough. It's probably the girliest part of Rin's face. I think I'm blushing a little, but Rin doesn't notice. Yes, this nose right here. The barely visible nose. Are we still in that same scene? Really? <laughs> Thanks, I think I might be coming up or down with something too. Like I was saying. Oh, that. Uh. Rin doesn't seem to be too bothered about eating, so despite the uh, lack of Emmy provided lunch, we stay up on the rooftop. She comes over and stands next to me, right up against the fence, looking into the same abstract distance as I. Nobody else seems to be coming around to intrude upon this calmness, Tyler. It's quiet and peaceful. 
What does one do on a lunch break if not eat? Turns out that between the two of us, we don't really know. Fortunately, passing time is an activity that manages itself just fine. I'm gonna keep checking that every few seconds, man. Even though there's no conversation to fill the silence between the passing seconds, no pointless activities like cloud gazing to spend upon the minutes between now and then, time marches on relentlessly. I keep checking the time on my watch, and I keep checking that. Then decide it's a dumb thing to do. Instead, I try to hold out for as long as possible before I check it again. Maybe I can hold out for six or seven minutes. Rin remains silent, idly looking up at the uh, Zerillian expanse about us. Whatever. I wonder why, most often than not, we don't speak much. She said that she doesn't like speaking because of her perceived difficulties with expressing herself properly. As for me, I think I just got sucked into the habit at the hospital where I spent such a long stretch of time never really talking to anyone. Most of the time I feel comfortable about this quiet mood, and even when I get the feeling that I have to break the silence, it's always so difficult to come up with something to talk about when it's with Rin. She and I are on such different wavelengths that nothing seems to be on common ground. Uh, what is it? Uh, what, what, uh, what is that you like about the sky so much? She turns to me, her eyes dark and serious. Sky is the only thing that's perfect. I know it. You could. Uh, I know it. You could say I'm an expert of the sky if you wanted, and I am even if you didn't want to. A sky expert. It's always different, but it's always perfect. It's also when it's different. I follow her gaze up into the boundless blue expanse, thinking of her words. Do you ever want to do something different? Be something different? It wouldn't be so bad to be the sky. No, I mean someone else, someone different. Uh, go to a normal school like everyone else, not have to worry about stuff. Well, even if you went to a normal school, you still have plenty to worry about anyway. What stuff? I try to find the right words for a moment, but can't manage to form a sentence that I'd be comfortable with actually using. Man, I don't really want to say it out loud. Try, I'm not so good at mind reading. Uh, don't you ever want to not be disabled? She thinks about this and then shakes her head, frowning. That's a hard question. I don't know what to say. It's okay if you don't say anything. For some reason, I'm just so unsatisfied with who I am right now that I'm constantly thinking stuff like that. Pretty hard to admit, but there it is. There it is. Honestly, I feel relieved about finally saying it out loud to someone, even if it's just written. I think I want to be different. Sometimes I've thought about changing myself lately, but it's a bit scary, like walking backwards with your eyes closed. The difficult part is uh, to know where your toes are, not pointing at, I mean, directions. Even if I don't do anything, I would never stay the same. It's like my old paintings. They're different than what I painted now, because they're different. But they're uh, still my paintings, so there's nothing the same. That's really strange. I'm different every day, but I'm still me every day. Who am I then? Is that a riddle? We wanted to be. I don't know the right answer though, so you have to come up with it yourself. Well, it's the sky, isn't it? Going by your definition just now. I actually managed to surprise her by that. Maybe she had already forgotten about it. That's right, but I was thinking about myself when I said that. Very strange. Could it be that I actually am the sky? I don't think that's possible. Your logic's a bit off somewhere. She looks down and shuts up, and I can see she's quickly going over the deduction mentally, seemingly unhappy with the result she finally arrives at. Yeah, maybe I'm not this guy. It would make sense. I have a hard time knowing what kind of person I am. You're not the only one. It's like my mind is in some other place than the rest of me. Underwater. Yeah, I wonder how it got there. After no answer, so a brief silence falls between us for a moment. I shift my gaze back to the sky above us. Last time I really paid much attention to the sky was... I guess it must have been at the hospital. I could only see a thin strip of sky run the window of my room. If I walked up to the windows and pressed my face against the cold glass, the strip became bigger, but not by much. That sky made me feel sad and lonely, a reminder of the world on the other side. I wonder if there's another world beyond the sky we see from up here on the school's roof as well. I can't stop comparing life at Yamaku to my hospitalization, but I really should. I'm not there anymore. The narrow sky from the window of my hospital room, the faces of the doctors, the faces of my parents, the off-white walls everywhere, Iwanako's letter, echoing words she never said, effing to the past now. 
I wish I could forget everything up until now and that time would stop completely. There would be only me, Rin in the sky, and eternal lunch break on this rooftop. Perfect, unchanging, and forever. And I'm not sure if I like or hate the school. I could have gone to a normal school if I wanted. I chose to come here. Why? This society I would. Kind of like a melon or plum jelly. Do you think it was a good idea? I mean, there are a lot of good things about the school, but I think there are a few bad things also. I know. I kind of collect people because they're interesting. People here really are amazing. Most of them, but not all. Some people can't take it. They hurt too much. It get, eh, gets really bad sometimes, you know? They hurt. I wonder if you're like that too. I hope not. I don't like things like that. Eh, hey, I'm not your case study and I'm not going to give up and die or anything. Anyway, I bet more of that this place is too distant from the real world. What's the real world? Everything out there. Real people with normal everyday lives that fit together like a puzzle. Just long silence there, just like, did he just say that? Dude, just because they're disabled doesn't mean they're not real people. You're going back into that again, Asao. He was like, just getting over that way. He's just like, becoming more accepting and understanding, and now he's gone back into, you know, you know, people here are not like the real people in the real world outside of this place. Why? You don't think we aren't like that real people? Uh, maybe we aren't. Well, no, we are. I just meant that it feels more like we're the leftover pieces. Rin thinks for a while, her almond-shaped eyes narrowing as she bites her lip a little bit like a child. Is it hard to be disabled? Her question earns a dry chuckle from me. You tell me, you've been in this business a lot longer than I have. She thinks about that for another while. I don't really feel that disabled, I mean, I do pretty much everything differently. But it's not that hard, I can always practice. I started to practice uh, food things this year. I think I'd want to learn to cook in a real kitchen someday. That's admirable, and but I don't think it's just a state of mind. Maybe not to you. I have no good count of that, so I concede by full and sound. The situation is making me more and more confused. I know what I want, but don't know how to reach it. Rin seems to believe she can simply will herself into the shape she thinks she needs to be. But I can't decide whether she wants to be a bird or a butterfly. I think in the end I'm not really that happy with who I am either, but that doesn't really mean I regret being who I am. That's the thing that's wrong with you, Asao. I've only started to process that rather blunt statement before Rin suddenly hugs me. Uh, what are you doing? I've never been hugged by a girl with no arms before. To be honest, it doesn't really physically feel like a hug. The awkward way she presses her body against mine and the lack of embracing arms makes it feel like she fell on top of me. But the warmth of a real hug is still there and that's how I recognize it from what it is. I'm hugging you, Asao. I know that, but... Is it wrong? I thought this is what you're supposed to do. I'm not really used to this kind of thing. The first time Emmy hugged me, I got surprised and kicked her in the stomach. I can kick pretty hard, so she hasn't been hugging me an awful lot after that. It's not wrong, just... Oh, it's just me, uh... Because I'm a bit hard to me for the time being. I can't seem to react properly to anything. Really, so it... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is hard being disabled after all. I guess she has me cornered there. I don't have the energy to start arguing against it. But I feel like I have to get something out. Well, I... No, it's not hard. I think it's just me overthinking things. I really wish I didn't feel so sorry for myself all the time. I wonder if I was always this fragile or if I became this way after my incident. Nothing had ever truly shaken my world like that before. So there's no telling. Rin breasts her cheek against me tightly. I can feel the warmth of her body close against me. Her body temperature feels really high, or if she had absorbed the sunlight into herself and was now sharing it with me, or perhaps it's a natural state for her. It's the most comforting thing I've felt in a long, long time. Well, your heartbeat really does sound really weird. It's like a drunken percussion that walks through. Please don't say stuff like that, I get really, really uncomfortable. I laugh at her comment anyway, in an attempt to ease the tension, it sounds a little bit too forced. Like a kind of ha 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 ha. I'm sorry I'm such a mess. 
It's okay, it's the best part of you. Yeah, hearing that doesn't make me happy. She breaks up the hug and settles down, an awkward silence falls upon us like a blanket, me feeling embarrassed about myself and Rin trying to arrange her expression to something she likes. One last time I glance upwards. This rooftop's really great, it's like I'm just a little bit closer to the sky. I know a better place, but we can't go there on lunch break. We can take you there sometime if you want. Well, ring for the beginning of the afternoon classes, and Rin stands up to make her way downstairs. I don't hurry after her, deciding to stay up here for just a little while longer. Ah, thanks for the hug. Thanks for not kicking me. After Rin finally leaves, uh, leaves I finally let tears roll down my cheeks and cry for my condition for the first and only time in my life. Then I cast away that hollow person lying on hospital bed forever. You know, I'm surprised how much plot is going by. And this whole time I'm still just like, are we at that scene yet? And we're not! We're really not! I think the walkthrough lied! So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a sleep on right here. And, and I'm going to reload this. We're gonna go with the correct choice. And then, uh... Once, like, we've gone quite a ways into the plot that passes that point, then maybe I'll go back to that and see if I can get to that damn scene. Because then I can just skip over any, like, previous red dialogue. But I won't get to the ending before that. I, like, I'll go back to that before we get to, you know, any of the endings, preferably. But anyways, we're going to, like, be a bit more, kind of, you know, not, like, get all angry and stuff this time. This isn't like you. You told me that people should do things that, that they can't just because they can. And now you're being all wishy-washy yourself about something disappointed. I don't think I want to talk about this. I'm going. Rin stands up and trots out of the room without anyone saying anything. <laughs> it doesn't really feel all that different, really, does it? Well, actually it is, because... Hisao ended up rambling on a lot longer than the previous one, where he's like, You know what? I'm getting actually shaken up with anger. Um, sorry, I think I made her upset. <laughs> Don't worry about it. She'll be fine, I'm sure. I'll talk to her later. Boy looks at me over his circular pink glasses, smiling sympathetically. You've made friends with her then, Kai. Ah, uh, well, something like that, I guess. Depends on how you look at it. To be honest, I'm not really sure. Have we... is that the only... yeah. The rest of it's the same. And this scene is the same as well, so really, what is the difference? I guess the only difference would be that, uh... It's probably, like... Maybe it leads to a different scene at some point. But I don't know. Is there really a kind of way to get that scene wrong? the same? I suppose so. Two days later, I'm feeling less miserable. I even go for a long, brisk, healthy walk like the nurse recommended, something which I had avoided and dodged with all sorts of excuses earlier. Okay, let's save this right here. We, yeah, indecision. Let's see how they both look. Days later, I'm feeling less and small. Sorts of excuses later. Yeah, exact same, but let's have a look at the uh, text history here. Yeah, same. Pretty much the exact same thing. It's just a slight difference. But the walkthrough mentions that it's like an extra scene you get for that, but God knows where it is. The walkthrough doesn't specify. But anyway, I'm gonna call the recording there, because I've freaking been recording for, I don't even know how long, maybe like nearly two hours, I don't know. So, I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.